Launching rockets into space is inherently dangerous, as there are numerous potential points of failure. The most critical phase is takeoff, which can be especially nerve-wracking for the astronauts on board. If the takeoff goes smoothly and the subsequent minutes of the mission progress without incident, the chances of reaching the space station safely significantly increase. This is precisely what Russian cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin and American astronaut Nick Haig hoped for as they prepared for their respective missions. Ovchinin is an experienced space traveler, having completed multiple missions. In contrast, Haig was a newcomer to space travel, making this his inaugural mission. As a former combat and test pilot for the U.S. Army, becoming an astronaut was a logical next step for Haig. He spent years training for this opportunity, including an extended period of time at Russia's Star City facility, where he and Ovchinin practiced using simulators and prepared for any potential challenges they might face during their flight and time on the space station. As Haig arrived at the Baikonur Cosmodrome on October 11, 2018, he thought he was ready for anything. However, as he and Ovchinin prepared to enter the capsule, he found himself becoming increasingly anxious. Despite this, his Russian colleague remained calm and collected, even in the face of the impending launch. Perhaps this level of coolness is a result of his experience, having completed multiple space flights and spent time on the International Space Station. Regardless, it was a striking contrast to Haig's own nervous energy. The astronauts currently stationed at the space station were eagerly anticipating the arrival of Ovchinin and Haig. They had even prepared a small welcome banquet for their colleagues, despite the limited resources available to them in space. As the countdown began, the members of Mission 57 in their capsule eagerly awaited the start of their journey. As the engines roared to life, the Soyuz rocket was nearly obscured from view by the flames and smoke emanating from its exhaust. The crane holding it slowly began to detach and the crew reported that everything was going according to plan. Those watching the liftoff from the control center remained relatively unperturbed. This was a routine occurrence for them, as they had overseen countless launches in the past. All the parameters had been checked and double-checked, and the rocket itself had been carefully looked over to make sure everything was where it should be and working perfectly. As Soyuz slowly lifted off the launch pad and began to detach itself from the Earth, the crew embarked on their six-hour journey. Meanwhile, those at the space station could begin heating up the welcome banquet in preparation for the arrival of Ovchinin and Haig. It was a big event that deserved a party. Two minutes into their journey, Ovchinin and Haig suddenly found themselves weightless. This was much sooner than they had anticipated, and it was clear that something was not right. Haig glanced over at Ovchinin, and saw that his previously confident colleague now looked concerned. It was a stark reminder that space travel is an inherently risky endeavor, and even the slightest misstep can have serious consequences. Suddenly, the capsule began to shake violently. Ovchinin looked over at Hay and saw that his arms and legs were flailing about uncontrollably, making him resemble a rag doll. A moment later, Ovchinin found himself in the same state. It was clear that something was seriously wrong. The mission was quickly spiraling out of control. As a first-time space traveler, Haig wasn't sure if the rocket's erratic behavior was normal. He looked to Ovchinin for guidance, closely observing the Russian cosmonauts' reactions. Ovchinin, a veteran of multiple space flights, quickly sprang into action, issuing short orders in an effort to regain control of the situation. There was no time to think, only to act. Ovshinin and Haig had been trained to react quickly in emergency situations, and Ovshinin immediately activated the security system. They knew they had to separate the capsule from the rocket as soon as possible. If one of the engines had failed, a distinct possibility, the last place they wanted to be was next to a rocket fuel tank. It was only a matter of time before everything exploded. An alarm blared through the cabin as a red light began flashing. The capsule was separating from the rocket, and the shaking grew even more violent. 
The astronauts struggled to hit the buttons and switches they needed to activate the emergency protocols. Separating the capsule from the rocket is a bit like firing a bullet from a rifle. First, the capsule spins around its axis to establish its trajectory, and then it enters a state of freefall. The parachutes are automatically activated a short time later, when the capsule re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. It is a complex process that requires precise timing and execution in order to ensure the safety of the crew. Despite the chaos and urgency of their situation, Haig managed to take a quick glimpse out the window. He saw the curvature of the Earth and the endless expanse of space. It was a view that someone else might have been able to appreciate under different circumstances, but for Haig, the question of survival was paramount. As they frantically worked through the emergency procedures, he couldn't help but wonder if he would ever see it again. Ovshinen too kept an eye on the window, carefully monitoring their separation from the rocket and looking for any potential threats. He checked the position of the capsule and made sure it was on the correct trajectory. Meanwhile, Haig informed the control center that they had experienced an accident and were preparing for an emergency landing. It was a tense and stressful moment but Ovshinen remained focused and determined to see them through it. As the capsule gained speed, the astronauts monitored the parameters displayed on the screens. However, it was only after a few seconds that they experienced the G-forces that they had been most afraid of. During an emergency landing, these forces can be up to seven times stronger than they are on Earth. Ovshinen felt as though he was struggling to catch his breath and Haig suddenly remembered the story of Peggy Whitson, who experienced eight G-forces during a mission in the summer of 2008. Only now did Haig understand what she meant when she said she couldn't breathe, and that it felt as though something was pressing down on her lungs. At times, the strain on the body can be so great that bones can even crack. In that moment, both Ovshinen and Haig found it difficult to breathe, and Ovshinen felt as though a reinforced concrete block seven times his weight was resting on his chest. When he looked over at Haig, he saw that his eyes seemed to be bulging out of their sockets. No doubt he looked just as ridiculous, with his face distorted beyond recognition. It would have been a comic sight if the situation weren't so dire. Suddenly, they felt the impact as the parachutes deployed and the capsule braked abruptly. It was like being on a wild roller coaster whose brakes had failed, sending them flying in every direction. Once the initial jolt and toss subsided, the capsule began to stabilize somewhat. The astronauts were able to breathe more easily, and they heard a voice in their headphones inform them that rescue teams were on their way. It was a welcome bit of news, offering a glimmer of hope in an otherwise dire situation. Haig looked out the window again, wondering where the capsule might land. Would it come down in the water? On the Kazakh steppes? Or, if they were unlucky, in the mountains? There was nothing they could do to influence the trajectory now, but a quick glance at the monitor gave him hope. The capsule was staying on course, and the rescue teams were receiving updated coordinates every second. The voice in their headphones reassured them that the rescue teams were on their trail and would soon reach them. And then, finally, there was an impact, this time on solid ground. For a few minutes, the astronauts remained calm as they waited for the rescue teams to arrive. Then Ovchinen unbuckled his seatbelt and opened the door, with Haig following close behind. They looked around and saw that they were in a flat green area most likely Kazakhstan. They checked their locators and were relieved to see that they were still functioning. It was the first time either of them had laughed since the accident began. They were alive and that was cause for celebration. The satellite phone in the capsule was functioning, allowing the astronauts to contact the control center and their wives. As Haig tried to reach his family, they heard the sound of a helicopter approaching. The rescuers were on their way, bringing with them the promise of safety and the chance to return home. The astronauts received medical attention as soon as they were rescued, and fortunately, they were in good condition with no injuries. Later, when they were back at the base, 
their colleagues from the International Space Station also got involved via video call. Despite the initial disappointment over the failed mission, everyone was relieved that the astronauts were safe and unharmed. The incident serves as a reminder of the bravery and skill of astronauts and the dangers they face while embarking on these incredible missions. It also highlights the importance of proper preparation and safety measures in the pursuit of space exploration. Both Shinen and Haig's story is a testament to the human spirit and the determination to push boundaries and reach for the stars. Thank you for watching. If you thought this video was interesting, you may also like some of the other videos available on our channel.